Well, no matter how we try to predict the weather, of this we can be certain. It will always be with us. To understand it, let's look into any ocean, lake, pond, or puddle. Here in this watery world, cool and calm as can be, lives this damp little drip floating peacefully. But when the heat's on, the sun comes out. The rays, they agitate him, make him jump about. Well, he gets all shook. Look out, stand back. He's going to blow his stack. The drip evaporates. And then, he's joined by his friends. They're together again. They float up high on the moist, warm air. We can't see them, but they're still there. They fly way up where the cold's intense. Then back into droplets, they condense. And that's what makes a cloud. But when too many droplets crowd a cloud, that crowded cloud, he cries out loud. That's the way we get the rain. Well, look who's here. The little drip again. Back in the puddle. Heat. Beat. Rise. Skies. And that's what makes a cloud. This time those drops are blasted high. Still higher, still colder. Look at them fly. One turns to ice, another stick to it, getting bigger and bigger. Look out! I knew it! It's way too heavy! It's falling! Wow! The little drip's a hailstone now. He's back just where he was before, and the whole thing's ready to start once more. This constantly repeating cycle of weather may seem capricious and without direction, but throughout nature there is order. Weather is a constant blending of the basic elements, air, water, and sun. It all starts with the sun. This tremendous white-hot ball of gas, three-quarters of a million miles across, supplies the power that drives our weather machine. The sun is a gigantic atomic furnace, consuming itself at the rate of billions of pounds of matter per second. Across its boiling surface drift mysterious spots. Solar flares surge in flashes of raw energy. Writhing, flaming clouds of incandescent hydrogen gas explode hundreds of thousands of miles into space. The sun is absolutely essential to life on our planet. Our Earth is surrounded by an envelope of air. Radiant energy constantly pouring out from the sun heats the Earth and its atmosphere unevenly from pole to equator, setting in motion broad flowing rivers of air. Wherever opposing currents of air develop, giant eddies and whirlpools are formed. These are traveling areas of low pressure in the atmosphere. The clash of these opposing air streams causes clouds to form and usually brings stormy weather. Between the areas of low pressure, there are eddies rotating in the opposite direction. Here, air pressure is high. This usually brings clear skies and fair weather. By charting their positions each day, weathermen can estimate the course they will take and the weather that will result. Keeping track of the steady parade of storms and fair weather requires the constant preparation of new maps. This is a never-ending task. Weathermen must construct these maps from a continuous flow of data that pours in from weather stations all over the world. In remote, isolated areas, in crowded cities, 
in high-flying aircraft, and in ships at sea. Modern weathermen depend on a variety of specialized instruments to gather information. They measure temperature, moisture, air pressure, and wind speed. Balloons carry instruments aloft, automatically radioing back information. New radar techniques locate and track storms. And modern electronic computers now play an important part in weather forecasting by their ability to store and rapidly process vast amounts of data. But today we are just beginning to understand something of the forces behind the weather. Scientists realize they must search in many directions and ask countless questions. For instance, can future weather be predicted by looking at the past? Does the slow advance and retreat of glaciers over periods of centuries indicate cycles in the Earth's climate? Past records of bird and animal migration or the migrations of man may furnish clues. And even ancient tree rings give an indication of wet and dry periods. The vast unexplored polar regions of the Earth pose another kind of question. What effect do these frigid areas, covering millions of square miles, have on the weather of the entire world? Auroras, the ghostly lights that flicker in polar skies, tell something of what happens when energy from the sun plunges into the sea of air that surrounds the Earth. Adventurous scientists are probing the atmosphere itself, climbing to incredible altitudes in their search for knowledge. New scientific tools are being used. Rockets launched from balloons. And rockets launched from the ground carry instruments higher and higher. Unfortunately, these flights last but a short time, and only a small amount of information can be obtained. But now we have more advanced scientific devices for gathering data continuously over long periods of time. Not only from the atmosphere, but from space beyond, artificial satellites. Satellites reach into the unknown with instruments that duplicate man's own senses. The eye of the satellite is a photocell or a radiation counter. Its ear, a tiny microphone. Its memory, a tape recorder. And its voice is a radio transmitter. Here, these instruments are placed in an actual weather satellite designed to record the cloud formations covering the Earth. In this cross-section view, we see how all the instruments have been reduced to an amazingly compact unit weighing but a few pounds. Here is one of the electronic eyes of the satellite. This eye converts the light reflected from land, ocean and cloud into electrical impulses. These impulses from the eyes are changed into electronic signals that are recorded by this tiny tape machine. Recording continuously for periods of nearly an hour, this incredibly small instrument remembers everything the weather satellite sees. Triggered by a radio signal from Earth, the recorder plays back the stored information in only one minute. These precious reports on the Earth's cloud patterns are received by specially designed stations on the ground. The radio signals from the satellite are now converted back to a moving pattern of light on the oscilloscope and finally translated into a picture of the cloud formations the satellite has seen during one trip around the Earth. Today's weather satellites are small and are designed to do a limited job. However, they are the first step forward to larger and more versatile space explorers of tomorrow. These future satellites will be the key to precise forecasting and control of weather.